thinking about the Old Testament now in particular, and you have already been talking about the Old Testament uh, in some of those examples, why is learning how to preach Old Testament narratives important? Um, I came up with six E's. I know you're an English teacher as well. You used to be, Chris, so I'm sure you <laughs> okay. love this. Six E's sounds good <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, acronyms. Uh, it's called an acronym, right? Yeah. No, no, it's not an acronym. It's just E. Alliteration. Alliteration, yes. I need to learn more English stuff from you, grammar from you. Okay, um, so E is extensive. So uh, why is it important to preach Old Testament narrative? Uh, because approximately 40%, something like that, of the Old Testament is narrative. So mm -hmm. if we want to be able to teach that part of God's word well, um, then, yeah, so we need to learn Old Testament, how to preach Old Testament narrative. Uh, another second E is that it's educational. So educational, I mean, the whole of the Bible tells us about God's character, but we can also see it through um, Old Testament narrative. As often it talks about how God did this or God did that um, in the lives of his people, uh, especially in the Old Testament. So that's educational. So extensive, educational. Third one is, well, it's exciting. <laughs> Narratives and stories are exciting. I mean, who doesn't like, like a good story? Right. I'm sure you do, right? Because you have young children, you understand. <laughs> they, like, yes. they like stories as well. And um, I don't think we ever grow out of that. So even as me, someone who's middle-aged, um, I enjoy stories as well. And uh, Old Testament is basically stories. And, um, you know, it covers the whole gamut of human experience from life to birth and and suffering and happiness and everything in between. Um, so, yeah, so it's exciting. Um, it engages us in a way that I think maybe other genres don't in the same way. So we can often put ourselves in the story, we might identify with one of the characters, uh, and then we can sort of see how they make decisions, good or bad, and what happens to them. And I think that reinforces the message uh, in a much greater way than just, you know, it's a straight statement would, would not in the same way. Yeah. Uh, examples. So we know that often we look at uh, stories and narratives um, and the example of the characters, either good or bad. There are issues with that as well, which I'll talk about in a second. But yeah, we still can use that as examples, as, as Paul tells us in Corinthians, we can. The, the fifth E is ethics. The fact that it's in the Bible, I think, pushes us towards a moral, ethical sort of uh, meaning for the passage. So it does teach us about God. Uh, we can draw examples, but there is there is something that God is telling us about how we should live in his world um, as his people through the story. So that's why I talk about ethics, um, how we can derive moral principles for how to live today. That would be uh, the fifth E. And then the final one is, this is pushing it a bit, um, but six E is expectation. So that's expectation of Christ. Narratives point forward or anticipate Christ. Um, so this helps us to modify the previous two E. So that modifies examples and also modifies ethics uh, because we know that characters fail, but Christ doesn't. So the characters in the narrative are invariably going to uh, fall short as examples for us, whereas Christ never does. So he's like the perfect example. Um, and also the principles, the moral principles that we derive from Old Testament narratives, as we said before, because it's one big storyline pointing to Christ, um, the ethics and the morals that we derive from the Old Testament needs to be also viewed through the lens of Christ. Does Christ change this? Does he modify it? Does he uh, negate it? Um, does he sort of escalate the expectation? So the sixth one is expectation um, of Christ um, and then how he modifies or changes how we view, um, I guess, examples and ethics that we derive from uh, Old Testament narrative. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm so glad you added that sixth E there, actually, <laughs> uh, because I think that as you were kind of alluded to, alluding to there, um, ethics and examples can be a tricky area, can't it, with the Old Testament? And sometimes we can go, we can actually go quite far wrong uh, by focusing too much on the examples of people uh, and and thinking we should simply. Uh, kind of copycat <laughs> whatever they did uh, because they must have been these godly people and whatever they did we should do um, or that they are teaching us the ethics that we should live out today um, so you've kind of pointed there to how we how we handle that potential pitfall uh, by then looking to Christ 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when I derive ethics from a, a narrative, I like to confirm it with some clearer teaching in the Old Testament, maybe from the law. So, you know, do not steal, do not murder, you know, is that confirmed? Uh, but then I also like to see if that principle is confirmed uh, after Christ comes as well, uh, either in the teaching of Christ, uh, in the life of Christ, or application of the gospel in the New Testament writers, um, you know, the apostles and other New Testament authors as well. Right. That sounds like a great tip. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>